Hey guys, how's it going? Lunar Complex here, and I just want to show you guys this neat little thing I put together where instead of having some lame, boring choice to pick a boy or girl in a video game, or maybe a choice of four things or two things, I have a neat little picture thing set up here. So I prompt the player boy or girl, and then if I hit right on the keyboard, it will highlight the girl character and make some sort of sound effect, and likewise if I hit left, or yeah, left. It will highlight the boy character and play the same sound, and you can just select which one. And if I hit enter, it will ask boy or whatever you want to put down to prompt. And if I hit no, it will just let you keep selecting. And if I hit yes on the girl, pick the girl, I am now the female character. And if we go back and choose the boy character, Actually played a different sound. I wonder why. We have a uh, we have the boy character we could play as. So yeah, I thought I'd share with you guys how I did this. All right. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is make some pictures. The images I have are the one with the boy highlighted, the girl faded, the both of them being faded, and with the girl highlighted and the boy uh, faded. And I have them set to 912 by 528. And the only plugin I'm using is Yenfly's core plugin which uh, or core engine which uh, allows me to change the dimensions of my game screen other than that what you're gonna have to do is have four switches selected left sound right sound and first pick other than the pictures and variables what you're gonna need to do is make sure that your character is set to transparent when you first start the game and so our first event up here trigger is gonna be set to parallel and we're gonna fade out the screen and disable menu access and the reason why we have to fade out the screen and fade it back in is because we have to buffer these couple pictures right here. So for some reason, RPG Maker, if we don't buffer these pictures ahead of time, they will flicker as soon as, uh, as, soon as the new picture shows. So it won't look as smooth, and you just have to make sure you wait a frame. If you delete the wait frames, they will not actually buffer. So I thought that was interesting. And we're just going to show these real quick while the screen is faded and then fade in the screen and prompt the player something like uh, what gender are you or whatever you want to turn this into really and then we turn the event self switch A on and this goes to page two and this is broken down into two parts um, even though there are two if statements here I don't mean these two if statements uh, I made an extra page here and copied it and took out all the sound effects and so this is mainly how it's working if player is facing left go ahead and show a picture of the boy being highlighted and the girl being faded and if the player is facing right just do the opposite of that show the other picture with the girl being highlighted and the boy faded but if we want to add sound we have to do a whole bunch of stuff which was very super annoying to figure out so in the conditional branch if player is facing left we're also going to check if first pick is off and if so go ahead and play a sound effect the sound effect to kind of selecting the uh, players gender character whatever you want to do and after we do that we're going to set first pick on so that we don't replay the music again and we're going to turn left sound on and more importantly we're going to show the picture of the boy being selected because the player is facing left and the boys on the left side we're going to have another conditional branch here if right sound is on go ahead and play the uh, sound effect and then right after this conditional branch we're going to turn the right sound off so that when it does play the sound effect we're going to turn it off so that if the player is facing left uh, I, I believe this event runs every frame that the game runs in and that's 60 frames so we don't want the player or the uh, game to keep making the sound over and over again 60 times a second and that is why we have to do all of this extra stuff and so our next conditional branches uh, almost the same just a few things are inverted so if player is facing right instead of left uh, we're gonna do the same check here for um, to see if this is the first pick if it is go ahead play this sound and then turn first pick on and I know that's a little backwards right now uh, so because during the first selection we're actually gonna go through this first pick is off anyway but since switches start in the off position I figured might as well have this conditional branch check for off and then go ahead and turn it on at the end and then don't ever worry about it then we're gonna turn right sound on and show the picture of the girl being selected and we're gonna have another conditional branch if the left sound is on go ahead play this sound and then turn the left sound off so to kinda of step through this to make more sense of it if the player is facing left let's say I'm facing left first pick is off because I haven't set it yet 
we're going to play this sound. So as soon as the boy is highlighted, we're going to hear a sound when we uh, hit the left button, controller, or joystick, whatever. We're going to turn first pick on so that we never go back into this uh, conditional branch. And we're going to turn left sound on. So if the player decides to turn right, we're going to then go to this uh, conditional branch, making sure we don't go back into here, which we won't. Down here, if left sound is on, which we've just turned it on here while the player faced left, we're going to go ahead and play the sound effect and then turn it off so that it doesn't keep playing it while the player is facing right. And when the player faces right, we just turn right sound on. Just how we turn left sound on while the player is facing left. It's just a little backwards how if the player is facing right, we care about left sound being on. And if the player is facing left, we care about right sound being on. And I'm just glad it works. And uh, you want to make sure this trigger is also parallel, just like the first page. And of course that your condition A is, is switched on, the self-switch A. Next, what we're going to do is, well, there's no escape from here, which is why we have these extra events down here. Now, these two, above and below the character, are basically just character blocks. You set them the same as character, uh, trigger doesn't matter, just set it the action button by default, and this just makes sure that the player doesn't, isn't able to move. The bottom one is the same as the top one there. Now, this left one over here it's going to be same as character's action button when the player is facing left so this event right here and they hit a or action or enter or the x button or a button whatever it is we're going to show some text boy question mark or whatever you want to prompt them like do you want to play as the boy are you a boy blah 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 and we're going to show choices if no we're not going to do anything at all we're just going to forget that ever happened and the player can then select right or left again it, they, they can do whatever but the most important thing is when they choose yes we're going to play a little confirmation sound uh, i chose heal eight because it sounds pretty awesome see that sounds awesome and we're going to have a control switch selected set to on and i will leave it right there while i go back here and now if we look at the third page in the main event we have selected on as the condition here and we also have self switch A. So while we're running this event over and over and over again, if we have selected one of these events over here and hit yes, we're going to go ahead and go to this page here, which just turns itself switch B on and goes to our end page here where nothing happens to this. And I suppose, well, I turned the trigger to parallel because I wanted to erase itself when, whenever it's loaded. And the reason I go through all of this, all of these steps instead of just not caring about this event is. Uh, I care if the player can re-enter here. I make all of these kind of foolproof to where after this whole selection process, if the player does come back to this particular map with these particular events, nothing happens. The player can actually come back here and it won't restart this whole selection process again. And now we'll continue past the um, turning selected on. We're going to go ahead and fade out the screen, teleport the player, and turn this event self-switch A on to where it will now just erase itself and make sure the trigger is parallel so it actually does erase itself. Likewise, uh, if the player decides to choose right, we're going to prompt him if they want to choose the girl character. We're going to show choices. If no, nothing happens. And if yes, we're going to play the sound effect, do everything else that is the same, except we're going to add the girl party member and then remove the boy party member. I'm not actually sure if you can do that the other way around. I don't believe so because then you wouldn't have any character to play as. I'm not sure, but uh, just make sure the priority is same as character and action button. And of course when self switch A is on it just stops itself. Now the only thing we have to do is go to the place we want to send the player, have an event here that runs parallel so that it runs uh, as soon as the player is here. We're going to give them back their menu access erase picture one so the pictures we use to display the character selection change their transparency to off so that you can actually see the player then we're gonna fade in so that the person can see the game player and stuff like that and turn this event self switch A on which will just turn itself off and erase the event and it will go away and that's basically it I hope you guys enjoyed this video and yeah thanks for watching